it's Lisa. The other day when I did the scrappy tag video where I answered the questions, um, the question that I fittingly left to last was what project have you been procrastinating on? And I picked an album that I was thinking about doing regarding a business that I used to have and was sewing related. Um, however, I have, um, I thought a couple of days later about another project that I probably need to do more quickly. In fact, I've kind of started working on it already uh, to get something that I use and that I've been wanting to do something in, in conjunction with paper crafting as well. This has to do with cooking and it's just not business or anything. This is just everyday life. Um, I noticed some years ago a friend of mine had taken all of his recipes and put them in these kind of in page protectors in a nice notebook and it was really very well organized and um, I really admired that. So I did that to our recipes and I even typed up my recipes in this particular format where I could easily see the ingredients, what to do with the ingredients. I really like this format but I think the reason why I haven't kept it up is it's a bit time consuming to go in and retype uh, recipes. So lately I've just started taking recipes that I found online that I use a lot and um, printing them with larger uh, font and I always indicate of course where the recipe uh, came from. And, and usually I've adapted it in some way, made some changes to it. And I have all this in a notebook that's falling apart. See, it's, it's coming apart here. It's kind of a cheap notebook. I've had it for a number of years and it's not really large enough. So also coincidentally, I had some uh, Staples ink rewards that I needed to spend and we happened to be going by a Staples. We don't have very many Staples in our area and we happened to be going by a Staples. So I picked up a new notebook and the red one was on sale. <laughs> I remembered when I got store I thought, okay, what colors are in that paper collection? And I knew red was in there. So I went ahead and got a red notebook. This is one that you can uh, slide paper down in and that's what I wanted. I want to be able to put some of my designer paper in here and make a pretty uh, notebook to hold all my recipes and then um, then it's easy to use. You know, if I had a tablet, computer tablet, I could probably keep my recipes on that, but then I'd have to have the tablet in the kitchen and sometimes, you know, I start working on something like today I'm making homemade pizza, so I've got to make dough and then it'll be, you know, an hour or so before I do anything else with it. I don't want to tie up an electronic device that long, so just paper copies of stuff is often the old-fashioned way can always be, can be the best way sometimes. This paper collection is from Stampin' Up! It's an old one I bought on clearance called Domestic Goddess and this was one of the things I wanted to do with it when I got it and I've had it for years now. But it has this really pretty paper that's food themed. Now there are some things, like there's some laundry themed stuff in here and cleaning themed uh, stuff, but most of this is food themed. Like there's a cleaning theme but you could use the back side of this. So I'm going to use as much of this paper as possible I think. And on the cover and in the page dividers for the recipes because what I found, get this notebook out, is the dividers that I have, these are ones you know I bought at the office supply store. When you put your stuff in the the uh, page protectors, you can't see the dividers. They don't stick out far enough. So what I want to do with this album is make my own dividers so that they stick out far enough and I can see them. And they might even stick out beyond the end of the notebook. If they do, I don't care. I, I want to be able to quickly find my different uh, sections and go to them um, so that I can get my meals done. Now I have all this pretty paper. I also went through and found some old cardstock that had um, some of these similar colors. Of course, I have lots of fancy, nicer, heavier cardstock, but I thought I might as well use some of this up. For a project like this where the paper is going to go inside of this kind of cover and then the page protectors are going to be in between, of course, all the uh, recipes, everything needs to be flat. I can't get into my wood veneers and brads and stuff like that. So we're looking at paper, stickers, I have some silhouette die cuts that I've downloaded for other things that relate to food. I know I have an apple and I think I have a mixer or something, I can't remember, but I'll look and of course there's other die cuts that I could get and do some things like that. So those are what I have pulled out 
uh, so far to work with on this project. It pro I don't think it's going to take a tremendously long period of time, but if you, even if you don't want to do a recipe book, this is how you would do just a regular notebook. If you want to do anything that you decorate up, and you, I could do the back as well, and I might if I have enough paper uh, left to put a sheet in, in the back as well. Um, but this is just going to be something nice and useful, and I want it to be pretty because it's the kind of thing that I see every day measuring my notebook and I want to cut my paper at least an eighth of an inch smaller width wise because I want it to be able to slide in easy and as I add things to the front of it it will get a little bit of bulk to it. I'm going to set that back aside to make sure I have enough paper before I cut that one. All right, we're going to pull out a few of these page protectors and just kind of see how everything's going to fit in here and how large my um, dividers need to be. And I'm not giving measurements for this because it's going to depend on your notebook. And I, they should be pretty standard sizes, but I don't know if there's variations from store to store. I'll talk about this a little later on, but this notebook ended up being a little larger than the one I had been using. So um, you just have to measure what you have and see what's going to work for you. Now one thing I did discover, I used my crocodile to punch my holes because I was at the time too lazy to go downstairs and get the three hole punch out of the office. Um, but that didn't work out really well for me because the holes weren't really large enough and they didn't flip easily within the notebook. So I'm doing, doing that here, but later on I use the three hole punch to actually punch um, all of my sheets. Just sorting out uh, some of these different solid colored papers. Some of them have some letters and things on them, but those are going to get covered up with uh, some of the decorative papers that I'll do in whole or in part to create the different uh, part, different page dividers. I decided I just wanted to go ahead and use up this collection. There are some pretty papers in here that are not cooking related that can be used for other things, but I've got a lot of paper and it all matches, so it's time to just go ahead and use it. Now the process I did was I cut a page divider the size that it needed to be and then I cut a piece of the designer paper to 11 inches and left the width the full 12 inch width and just scored it and folded it over the end of the cardstock or the solid colored piece of paper and that gave me a double width of paper so it's a nice sturdy uh, divider. I'm going to add either a sticker or a strip of paper to cover that seam these are also stamping up stickers, but they were from another collection. They just happened to match. And then I did have the three-hole punch here and went ahead and punched that. But what I used for the um, um, little reinforcements is I was at this point still sticking with the crocodile to cut the centers. Later on, I ended up using the three-hole punch. So I would punch out with a three-hole punch out of white cardstock and then go over it with uh, the larger circle punch to create um, a one of those reinforcements because I didn't have any from the office supply store. What I'm doing here is creating the tabs. I used the old Stamping Up tab punch, which is not available anymore. It's a retired punch, but you could um, to cut a tab design from using uh, your die cutter or there's other kind of tab punches on the market and just um, I punched that out and I used my typewriter to type the text and then I laid it on some laminating film and I'm cutting out the design around the laminating film to give this a little extra reinforcement keep it clean if you don't have laminating film you can use packing tape and then we'll just glue this on. And I'm going to do the rest of these off camera and show you how I did or what I ended up with. I have all of the tabs finished, so I'll show you these. Some you've seen there, but um, I went ahead and used as much of the paper as I had and backed it very often with uh, cardstock. So, like in this case, I just wrapped some of the cardstock to the front and trimmed it with a decorative punch. This is one I really had to piece together. I just didn't have a lot of uh, some of the papers left. Some I used the entire sheet, wrapped it to the back. And then these categories are just ones that worked for me, for my recipes. 
And the last one, miscellaneous, I had to get one sheet of paper out of the um, of my other drawers of paper by color that did not go with this standing up collection. And I want to show you how old it is. This is from Cosmo Cricut 2009. <laughs> I keep stuff forever. So anyway, it was good to get to use that. I think it was some kind of household kind of collection as well, what that originated from. So I will put all these in the notebook. So it's time to go back to the notebook and see what we can do with the cover. What I decided to do for the title, I, I, I waited to do this while I was trying to think up a cute title, and I never did think up a cute title, so I just kind of kept it simple. Uh, very unoriginal here. I did die cut um, a little pot that I had, and when I was looking for something else, I found a doily, and I thought that might go really well on here. And when I want to put some other papers around it, it also dawned on me something else flat that I could use would be washi tape uh, to go on this front cover. So let's go ahead and pull this out. And I'm going to do a little, I don't have any corner punches anymore other than just rounded corners, so I'm going to do this, which is to put the corner in your circle punch, just a quarter of it, and that makes kind of a nice finish. All right, and then this is all the paper that I have left. This is it. There are no full sheets, nothing but these scraps. That's all I got. So let's see what we can do with taking this and just doing a little bit of decorative stuff here um, of a little bit of this stripe paper with these design or uh, border paper, I should say. Selecting some bits and pieces here to go with the um, title that I created in PowerPoint and just printed out on white cardstock. And I trimmed up some of the fancier border papers, kind of arranging those. I want to use my die cut on top of that doily in some fashion. I'm not going to glue this on camera, I'm just going to kind of show you my thought process as I went through trying to decide how many layers. At one point I was going to put some checked paper behind that gray, but I decided I was getting too many layers and it was going to get too uh, thick. Just keep playing around here. I'm not doing tons of design. The paper's already got a lot of pattern to it. So this is how my front finished up with just some papers. I did end up adding just a little bit of washi tape. I went around the very edge of this with a black marker to make it sh show up and add a little bit of silver in that gap in the die cut. So I got kind of a simple front there that was easy to slide in. It would be easy to change to another uh, notebook if this one um, fell apart like the, the other one did because I used this a lot and it's kind of heavy. Um, I've put my recipes in here. They need a lot of work. I need to go through all these and there's stuff I need to type up and there's stuff that I need to pull out that I'm not using, things I need to print out and put in here. So I've got a lot of stuff to do. I did make one change to the labels. I had forgotten bread. So I took out the salad category. That can go in, in with vegetables because I, don't, I do not have a lot of vegetable recipes. I, uh, vegetables tend to be a pretty simple affair around here. So anyway, that's how my notebook came out and the tabs do show through. That's not a big deal. One thing I discovered early on when I was um, starting to put this together is that this notebook is bigger than my other notebook and it actually won't fit in the space that I normally put it in and the cabinet the cabinets that I normally keep this in are really shallow on the back side of my island so it's going to have to have a new place to reside in my kitchen and I think it will probably end up laying on my desk and then I can just use it when I'm menu planning and also looking at my uh, recipes and it's fairly easy to take recipes out of this album much or this notebook much easier than my old Notebook. So we'll see how that goes. I did not end up putting anything on the end because it's pretty obvious what this is, but I could, you know, print out a similar label and put on the end if I wanted to. And then the back, this had these little things that you couldn't you couldn't put something all the way over, and I didn't notice that, or if I would have probably used a red paper instead of the, the green, but that's okay. Now all I have left, this is it. 
here's what's left of this collection. I'm just going to throw it away. These last few little bits. That's all I had left of that standing up collection. I had used just a tiny bit of it uh, before. So I really got my money's worth out of this because I probably didn't spend five dollars or something on it. Um, and I've got a nice little notebook that I can use for my recipes and I do use my notebook almost every day. So anyway, Thanks for joining me for this project, a little bit, a little something different. Uh, if you want to do a recipe notebook or a notebook of any kind, um, it's very easy to decorate and put something fun um, on there. Make your own tabs if you want, or you can take purchased uh, dividers and just add a little something to them. I could do more decorating with these pages if I wanted to add more stuff to them. Um, and, and make them more interesting, you know, whatever you want to, to do with your uh, notebook. So thanks again for joining me. Bye.